John here guys and today we are going to talk about 3D printing and FPV. We printed a whistle. You realize these things go for 25 cents a pop at a party store. That's right. This is the next in our 3D printing series that we are working on on the channel. And I'm going to show you the simple settings that you can use to start printing TPU for FPV purposes immediately uh, immediately that's right if you are have been thinking about getting a 3d printer for fpv then i'm not surprised and these are all prints that i have printed here on a stock ender 3 that's right i have two ender threes one that's modified one that i'm keeping stock so that i can give you the differences on what those are and give you the capabilities of them right out of the box um, since we have been home, I haven't been able to get out much. So as you can imagine, I have been printing, printing, printing. <laughs> Check out this Johnny 5 I printed. Pretty cool, huh? But PLA is easy. PLA is simple. Any printer, especially any stock printer, can print PLA. And there are a lot of confusion out there on whether a stock Ender 3 can print TPU for FPV. Now, what do I mean by FPV? We want to be able to print things uh, that are flexible and yet hard that can take hits like this Floss 3 camera mount, like this pair of Ethix Cinerat um, motor protector duct thingies, or a GoPro mount, or in this case, this is the first FPV product that I have designed. It is a mount for the iFlight Nazgul and is for the Insta360 Go, tiny little camera. Uh, and so you can have the ability to both design your own parts, but you don't have to. Like I actually was able to do this after three days of learning Fusion 360. So that's pretty impressive. There's a lot of good tutorials. I'm gonna leave some of those in the description below if you're interested in this. But I printed for, you know, the better part of a year without designing my own parts at all because there's so many great parts out there for you to design. There are arm guards for your racing quads. There are GoPro mounts available. There are ducks like this open source design. On the 533 um, quad that I've had on the channel, the frame of Heads Up, the current multi-GP world champion, his frame has a variety of parts available on Thingiverse and that's where you go to search designs. And so use a uh, slicing software like Cura, which is free, uh, but you need to know the proper settings to be able to print TPU. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. Some people say, oh, you need an upgraded extruder, you need an upgraded hot end, you need this, you need that, blah. It's not true, guys. You can, prevent, you can print completely quality, amazing parts that are rigid or flexible by just manipulating your settings. And I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So first thing you do is there is a 3D printing channel out there called Chep. I like Chep. He has a lot of really simple, easy to follow reviews. And he has a set of settings that you can download and leave the link to, you, to his channel. He has one for uh, PLA at 0.2 millimeters quality. He has a higher quality one, a lower quality one, and he has a flexible filament one. But the flexible filament he's using is something like Ninja Tech that's super flexible. We don't want that. That's like if you're printing a phone case. So that's where it gets tough. If you use that on something that you want to use for FPV, it's not going to come out right. You're going to have strings, you're going to have other issues. And that's why some people think that it's not doable, but it is. So we're actually going to start with his PLA profile for 0.2. It's called Chep Magic 2.0. And here are the things on the screen that we are going to manipulate in order to get you to where you want to be. We're going to adjust the temperature. We're going to adjust the speed. We're going to turn on combing. We're going to turn um, on support depending on the, the model. Sometimes you're going to want to have support on, sometimes off. I'm going to tell you these are the settings you're going to want to adjust your support to. And by just adjusting these few settings, you will be able to reliably print TPU. Now, remember, before you start printing 
the level that you may need for TPU versus PLA on your bed may be slightly different. So you're gonna to wanna to get it a little bit closer. You wanna get your nozzle a little bit closer to the bed when you're doing TPU. So you may wanna re-level and your piece of paper, you're gonna want it to grip just a little bit more. So try that a couple of times. CHEP also has a bed leveling test where it prints a thin line around the bed and you can look uh, while you're printing that out. It only takes about two minutes to do. And I find that um, after you've done the paper is a way to really fine tune the leveling for that. So once you have that, you can then start printing these parts. And one of the main things that I wanted to get a 3D printer for like almost three years ago was to print my own parts for FPV. I was buying a lot of mounts. I was buying a lot of 3D printed accessories. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I can print them myself. And it's taken me a few years to get there because there is a lot of confusion. Uh, but here, I'm gonna save you the time of having to figure out all those things. You can go straight to the end. Now, are these gonna be as high quality as what you would buy? Um, maybe, maybe not. The other things you're gonna wanna do is calibrate your E-steps. I'll leave a link in the description to do that. And then you're gonna wanna get your retraction settings right. Now that's gonna differ on filament to filament. Um, so for me, the filaments I like to use for TPU, if you want something really hard like a pod, you're gonna wanna use like a Sate Smart or a Cheetah. If you want something that's inexpensive, go with like a Yogi or a Zeal Tech. Uh, TPUs, those are both inexpensive, and where can you use those things for like arm guards, uh, things like little things that hold your antennas in place. Those you don't need to be super um, rigid. So you can pretty much just use the good expensive stuff for your pods and your GoPro mounts and use the cheaper stuff for just about everything else. Uh, so what do you think in the comments, guys? If you're still thinking about getting a 3D printer, I really suggest starting with the Ender 3. You can get one for about 170 to 180 bucks and start 3D printing right away. Uh, here's the general price of filament. Filament generally goes for PLA, 13 to $18 a roll. A roll comes in a kilogram roll. That will last you quite a long time. And then for TPU, it's a little bit more expensive. For TPU, you're looking at about, if you really catch an awesome sale, it'll be like 20, 21 bucks, 22 bucks. And then um, your regular price is more like 26. And then your good stuff, like a Saint Smart, is gonna be more like 30 bucks a roll. So printing all of the accessories for the Ethic Cinerat that we're gonna have on the channel very soon. I calculated that up. It ends up being about $3.50. Uh, for this Cinewoop Ducks and because you can buy that frame for only 30 something dollars you end up having a 30 you end up having a Cinewoop frame with all the accessories for under $40 Now a lot of those Cinewoop frames out there are $80 or $100 and so there's where owning your own 3d printer can really come in handy I'm also gonna be working on a flight one versus beta flight video and I'm gonna have um, Floss 3s built up for that. So this Floss 3, this is the concrete quad. It has blue TPU that I printed. I printed these arm guards on my Ender 3. I'll show a close up of these, but I wanted something to be able to differentiate the Flight 1. So I printed a lot of those same TPU parts in red. So it'll be really clear on screen which one I'm flying at which time and when I'm talking about the two ones. And that's the flexibility that you have when you can print your own stuff from your very own home. Um, a lot of that stuff does take a little trial and error. So hopefully these settings can catapult you to where you're up and running right away. And for that little nth degree, this will get you to like 90, 95% quality to get rid of that last bit of little bit of stringing then that's the trial and error where you're gonna to wanna to fine tune your retraction settings and your E-step settings like I mentioned before. What do you think in the comments? Are you gonna run out and get your first 3D printer today? If you do, leave me a comment. If you're already printing and you wanna be able to start printing TPU, leave me a comment. Let me know if these settings are helping you uh, get on your 3D printing journey. And if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Thanks guys.